Ladies and gentlemen, it is wonderful to have so many of our partners and friends here for this very special evening. Can I join the Chancellor in acknowledging the Governor, Her Excellency, the Honourable Kerry Sanderson AC, Premier, the Honourable Mark McGowan, other distinguished guests, my colleagues from near and far, and friends, one and all. Tonight is a night of celebration of the past, of the present and the future. We salute Curtin's journey from an institute of technology to a global university. We applaud the success that comes from working together towards a common goal. And we anticipate what the future might hold for one of this state's great institutions. Curtin's journey began in 1900 with the founding of the Perth Technical College. By the mid-1950s, the college was at capacity and WA's leaders recognised that renewed investment in education was critical to the state's growing economy. WA needed to become technologically inspired and to shake off its image as the poor cousin of the eastern states. As debate arose as to the nature of this new education provider, the then Director General of Education, Dr Thomas Logan Robertson, was gathering support for an institute dedicated to the teaching of advanced technologies. Robertson dismissed concerns that a new pillar of education would impact on WA's only university at the time, saying that by establishing a technological institute, and I quote, UWA would be strengthened, not hampered by the petty jealousies that would occur if a second university were to be established. In 1960, State Cabinet gave the green light to the new institute, which opened its doors to students seven years later as the Western Australian Institute of Technology. And recently, history has brought us full circle with Curtin now occupying one of the original Perth Tech buildings, the old Perth Boys' School, to create a city hub for engagement with our partners, our collaborators and our alumni. Having approved the new institute, there was the inevitable debate about location. But available land was soon identified as a consequence of the 1957 fire that had decimated the Collier Pine Plantation at Bentley. And as you can see, the site really was a blank canvas. The Institute's first structure was a panel of brickwork constructed to illustrate the proposed architectural concept, still clearly leaving quite a lot to the imagination. Mr Vin Davies, the public works architect of the day, designed the buildings to reflect the tough technological character of the Institute. However, the West Australian newspaper was not impressed, warning that, and I quote, a lot of people are not going to like the look of the million pound first stage of WA's new Institute of Technology. One of them was a pioneer of the Institute, Professor John DeLater, who scorned the buildings as being reminiscent of the Longmore Romand Centre. <laughs> but our first director, Dr Hayden Williams, approved of the finished product, describing it as attractive, a brutally frank statement of honest architecture. I'd like to think that John DeLater would have been more positively disposed towards the John Curtin Centre, which in 1996 created the formal entrance to the campus and a colonnade so evocative of places of learning and contemplation. Today, our wonderful Bentley campus retains the foundation architecture that reflected the modern but no-nonsense character of the Institute and blends it cleverly with our newer buildings. Gardens and artworks have softened the hard edges and added depth and colour. And campus life embraces, enhances 
and infuses the spaces between the buildings. But back to the days of concrete and sand. Quickly known by its acronym, WAIT was a place that was actually all go. In 1967, almost 3,000 young Western Australians enrolled at their new Institute of Technology. It appealed to a bright young generation who were energised by the state's growth and potential, who could participate in new fields in allied health or engineering and physical sciences, or explore creative technologies in architecture, media and theatre. And Waite's footprint was already expanding. In 1969, with a mining boom hungry for more skilled workers, the WA School of Mines in Kalgoorlie joined the fold and mining education was added to Waite's offerings. And as an internationally renowned centre of mining excellence, the WA School of Mines has been vital not only to the state's economic growth and prosperity, but also to the university's profile and reputation. In this exciting new environment of Waite, it's not surprising that an engaged student body emerged early on, as did a deep commitment to real-world hands-on learning. The Institute rapidly became one of the largest centres of advanced education in Australia, always maintaining its focus on delivering work-ready graduates. The next challenge for Waite's leadership was to advance the Institute beyond the image of technical education. A name change to the WA Institute of Technology and Commerce was considered, but the proposal was quickly put to rest by the acronym Wait and See. <laughs> but the director of the day, Professor Don Watts, was not content to wait. He was known for wearing a silver bracelet, for having a hairstyle reminiscent of the Beatles, and a reputation for stirring, and he had his sights on university status. This move was controversial, but his efforts were ultimately successful. As announced by Curtin FM at 11.59 on the 31st of December 1986, in one minute's time, Waite will become Curtin University. It was an inspired decision to name the new university after WA's only Prime Minister, John Curtin, who had garnered respect from both sides of politics for his strong leadership during World War II. Prime Minister Curtin was also a great orator and a nation builder who spoke of the role of universities in Australia's future and their need to look ever forward. And that's precisely what Curtin has done. Right from the start, the initiatives flowed. Today, our classrooms have transformed from the formal didactic lectures of the past. The sage on the stage model of learning has been replaced with engaged, connected, industry relevant and student friendly spaces. Authentic work settings have been replicated on campus from a simulated hospital ward to virtual reality headsets that enable students to tour mine sites to facilities like the trading room and the agency that buzz with the energy of financial markets and social media command centres. The nature of learning is also changing for our new generation students, learning can be anytime, anywhere, on any device. Our partnership with edX, the prestigious global online education provider, established by Harvard and MIT, and involving only four other Australian universities, reflects our endeavours endeavors to stay way ahead of the wave of digital disruption. But we haven't lost sight of the importance of the campus experience with a commitment to rich leadership, sporting and extracurricular opportunities. And over the years, our course offerings have expanded to encompass the disciplines and professions so critical to WA's economic and social prosperity. From agriculture, engineering, science and IT, through education, business and law, to the broadest suite of health professions offered by any Australian university, now including medicine. 
We've also contributed strongly to the expression of WA's cultural and artistic persona through our emphasis on creative and theatre arts, design and the built environment. The university has always been inclusive with a fundamental commitment to opening up opportunities for students from all walks of life. We were a leader in Australian Indigenous education, offering programs to Aboriginal students as early as the 1970s. Our Centre for Aboriginal Studies is a model of self-determination managed by Aboriginal staff, shaped by the Aboriginal community and housed in a beautiful purpose-designed building on our Bentley campus. Our Indigenous partnerships include an important program with Clontarf Aboriginal College to raise aspirations and deliver real change. Not many Australians associate Aboriginal people with the elite sport of rowing, but in 2015, this program saw WA's first Indigenous team compete in the annual state regatta, a wonderful achievement. And so to our research, even when Waite was a small collection of concrete buildings with a mandate to focus on teaching, the seeds of what is now a proud research university were being quietly sown. John DeLater and his physics colleagues set about acquiring some of the most advanced equipment of the time and building research capability, always with a focus on collaboration, on engagement with industry and on the challenges facing the state. Sadly, John is no longer with us, but with a minor planet named after him, his legacy shines bright. In our DNA as a research institution is an eagerness to scrutinise problems, design solutions, and deliver commercial outcomes for industry and start-ups alike, a focus that is reflected in our own smart campus initiatives, including the city's second driverless bus. And while the hands-free cigarette lighter has appropriately not stood the test of time, we can certainly boast about other commercial successes. These include products designed to help people deal with tinnitus, to improve minerals exploration and extraction, and convert biomass to energy. In the last 10 years alone, Curtin has established 20 start-up companies that have generated over $100 million in sales of new products and services based on developed technology. And the rise in our reputation and profile has been nothing short of impressive. Last year, Curtin was named as Australia's most collaborative and fastest rising university in research rankings. We're now ranked in the top 2% of universities in the world with major capabilities across a wide range of areas, including those that are so critical to our future, such as digital agriculture, defence and international security, big data, applied economics, clinical health trials, and a major involvement in one of the 21st century's largest scientific projects, the Square Kilometre Array. And way before innovation was the buzzword of our times, Curtin was a champion for the development of a science and technology precinct in the style of Silicon Valley, adjacent to the Bentley campus. Technology Park helped lay the groundwork for our $500 million Greater Curtin development that will take the concept one step further to create an environment for industry, academia and community to better collaborate, to innovate and to drive the advances so essential to our transforming economy. At the same time, we have had a deep commitment to the communities in which we are embedded. It includes household names such as Curtin FM, which was the first community radio station in WA, and our highly acclaimed John Curtin Art Gallery. And it embraces our alliances, which range from sporting icons such as the Dockers and Hockey Australia, to the WA Museum and the major national grains research body, GRDC, to our industry partners, including Bankwest, Chevron, West Farmers, Woodside, Cisco, 
and stretching as far as NASA. This engaged focus has led us from Waits Foundation on an ex-pine plantation in suburban Perth to Curtin's enhanced city presence, which includes the Graduate School of Business, one of Australia's very few city-based law schools, and our new engagement hub set against the backdrop of corporate Perth. And it has led to our global presence that broadly spans the Indian Ocean Rim and beyond. As in so many areas, Curtin was out ahead of the pack establishing an engineering and science campus in Malaysia in 1999, a health sciences and business campus in Singapore in 2008, and a major education presence in Mauritius in 2012. In an effort to extend our reach into Africa and South Asia, we are formally opening a campus in Dubai next month, with plans for it to grow into a full spectrum campus. And this year, we announced our newest teaching and research alliance with the 500-year-old University of Aberdeen in Scotland. This is a major bilateral strategic alliance that will see us join forces so that we can be more than the sum of our parts in areas of mutual strength, such as energy, medicine and health, creative arts and business, with one of our first initiatives being the establishment of a Global Energy Institute. Taken together, these international endeavours fly the flag globally for WA. They deliver partnerships that help drive business links and inward investment. They build capability and mutual respect and understanding in our region. And they provide the diverse learning environments that, that are so critical for the success of our future global graduates. Can I close by taking us briefly to some numbers that I think speak for themselves? We are now WA's largest university and the most preferred destination for university applicants. Our student population exceeds 58,000 and we have over 220,000 alumni. We are one of Perth's biggest single-site employers, directly employing more than 4,000 people and indirectly being responsible for some 12,000 jobs in WA. Our annual revenue sits at around $1 billion per annum, and in 2016 we contributed around $1.9 billion to the WA economy. To put that in context, it was around three times the gross value added of WA's gas electricity generation industry and 20% higher than the contribution of WA's residential construction sector. I'm privileged to be Vice-Chancellor of this great university in our 50th year. But the success belongs to the state, to all of you here tonight, to those leaders on whose great shoulders I stand and to our students, our staff, and our alumni. I also applaud and thank all of you here who have contributed to Curtin through your wise council, through our advisory boards and council, and through your philanthropic support. Your support magnifies our impact in so many ways, and you are all wonderful ambassadors for the power of education. Our institution was born out of ambition and out of a deep understanding that powerful economies and stable and strong civil societies have at their core world-leading and engaged universities. It has been a tale worth telling of a successful journey of which we should all be very proud. So now I ask how bright is the future for one of WA's great institutions We'll just watch this space. Watch as Greater Curtain comes to life and we double our on-campus student accommodation and we attract industry partners to co-locate on campus. And watch as we deepen our global partnerships, always with an eye on delivering benefit back to WA. As we secure our position as a core component of a vibrant innovation ecosystem, driving new industries and new jobs as we remain focused on fulfilling our obligations to regional WA, 
and as we ensure that our students are equipped with the advanced skills and perspectives so essential for their future success. And watch as more and more of our grad graduates step forth as role models, as leaders, and in ways that will inspire us all as they shape the future to be a better, stronger, and fairer place for those who follow us. In doing so, I assure you that we will remain true to those qualities of inclusion, engagement, and innovation that so define this great university. And we will do this at the same time as, as, as ensuring that we continue to meet our namesake, it's imperative that, above all things, the university must have a soul and must look ever forward. Thank you.